Okay, and we are live. Hey everybody, welcome to the May Exchange SA Chat, where we're talking with Keaton Ray. My name is Alexis Morgan, and I'm the APTA Student Assembly Director of Communications. And we have a special treat tonight, because we are talking about the House of Delegates, which is coming up in Nashville. Um, and then the next conference, which is coming up right after it. So we're talking with Keaton Ray, who is a delegate. So we get the insider information on what's happening this summer. So welcome, Keaton. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm honored. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself. So my name is Keaton Ray. Um, I am currently living in Portland, Oregon, but I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. Um, I graduated from Duke Physical Therapy in 2014, so not so long ago. Um, while I was at Duke, I served two years on the Student Assembly Board of Directors, so my first year as secretary, and then my second year I was on nominating committee. Oregon on my internship, so I was here for six months doing an orthopedic physical therapy rotation and fell in love with it. It's very outdoorsy, it's beautiful, the rain's not that bad. Um, People are really great here, so I fell in love with Oregon and decided to stay. Um, and as soon as I got to Oregon, actually, ironically enough, Derek Fenwick, the president of the OPTA, sent me a tweet. And I do not use Twitter. Like, through all of the people, like, TJ Janicki, Matt DeBull, bless your guys' heart, like, you've tried to get me on Twitter, and I just, it's like a wall. Like, <laughs> so anyways, Derek Fenwick sent me a message on Twitter saying, hey, you should come to our PT night out or PT pub night. And, uh, I did, and I was all by myself, and I was kind of nervous to meet everyone, yeah. and the OPTA just welcomed me with open arms, and ever since then, I've been really involved in the delegation, so I ran my first year out of school as a delegate, was elected delegate, I'm now serving my second year as delegate, um, and yeah, so I work in outpatient orthopedic and sports company, Advanced Sports and Spine Therapy in Portland, and it's a awesome first job, great mentorship, so I'm really lucky yeah. to be where I am. Well, we are, we're lucky to be able to learn a little bit more about the House of Delegates from you. So you've been a delegate, you said, for two years, right? Yeah, so the, well, this is my second year, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so what is the House of Delegates? We keep talking about it, we keep hearing about it, and it kind of seems like this foreign idea of a house with a lot of people in it. So tell us what the House of Delegates is, and that's a question from Valerie B. SPTA, and I think that's a question that we all have. Yeah, sure. So the House of Delegates, I like to think of it as kind of like Congress for the U.S., so it's the policy-making governing body of the APTA. Um, so it's comprised of delegates, so representatives from each chapter um, and different components who come together for three days a year. And we sit down and we discuss motions and um, decisions that have far-reaching implications for the association or for the profession of PT. Um, so what that essentially means is, is think about back to when we had a master's degree. So the decision to transition from a master's to a doctorate degree or the decision to pursue direct access or um, giving PTAs a vote at the chapter level. So all of these decisions are things that come about via motions at the House of Delegates, and then all of the delegates in the House from each chapter we discuss and sometimes argue and change and edit and evolve all these motions to become what they are now. And if a motion passes, then it's accepted by the APTA and put into action. Okay. A quick summary, but we'll go a lot more into details about it. Yeah, that was a really great summary. So let's back up just a little bit. Uh, what What is a motion? Yeah, good question. So um, a motion is essentially a, a idea or philosophy or um, just like a, a bill, kind of. Okay. Um, so a chapter can, or an individual within the chapter can think of an idea that they're really passionate about. I'm going to use the idea that Oregon is presenting. So Oregon's presenting a, a motion in the House this year, RC 1116, um, so to address student loan debt, so to address the problems around student loan debt in the profession. Um, so basically somebody, Derek Fenwick again, came up with this idea sitting in the back of the House last year, and he thought, wow, I'm really passionate about this. This is a problem. <clears throat> How do I bring this up to the association? Um, 
So what we do is we, we draft a motion, which basically is a, a it can be serve as a couple different things. So it can be a direct course of action to the APTA. Um, it can be used to articulate an attitude that physical therapy needs to publicize. Um, it can describe a goal for the association. So it's really any sort of action you want to put forth through the association. So there's a lot of documents that you that you go through to develop the motion. Okay. Motion to the delegates and the delegates vote on whether or not they should pass the motion, amend the motion, um, veto the motion, so on and so forth. So kind of like a bill. Okay. That's interesting. So anybody can bring forth a motion? Can students bring forth a motion? Yeah, totally. So it will kind of vary on how you do it. So you can, anybody can bring forth an idea of a motion, but only the the delegates, and tweet me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure only the delegates can actually bring the motion forward to the reference committee and the reference committee being the people behind the scenes who are reading through the motions and making sure they're worded correctly and appropriate. Um, so delegates can present the motion, but if you have an idea for a motion, you can either bring it to your student assembly or you can bring it to your chapter. Okay, that's great. Yeah, and um, so we've got some questions coming in on Twitter. Let's go ahead and go forth with those. Chase Edwards asks, how can students get involved within the House of Delegates without being located near D.C.? Yeah, so there's a couple different ways you can do it. So the, the House of Delegate is actually hosted just before next conference, and it's three days about. Um, so if you can't actually be at the House of Delegates, you can watch it online. They live stream it. If you have three days to just watch a live stream, that's awesome. More power to you, but I don't think most people probably do. <laughs> um, so you can follow APTA social media because they'll be posting a lot of the updates regarding the House, the ones that are able to be posted. Um, another really great way to do it, and I actually just learned this in preparation for this Twitter chat. Um, let me pull up my resource here something called the APTA Communities, and some of you may be familiar with communities, but if you go to APTA.org, up in the very top right corner, there's a section that says Communities, and if you click on it and you log in, there's a bunch of different communities within APTA that you can subscribe to, and one of them is the House of Delegates, and almost all of the documents on the Delegates community are made public to members. So you can read through motion drafts, you can read through discussions about the motion, um, you just can't directly comment on it. And I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. I think I read that all it's, it's accessible to all members, but it's a good way just to kind of subscribe via email and then stay up to date on what's happening with the motions and what motions are being presented. That's a, that's a really great resource. Um, and the Florida PT Association student SIG actually asked, what's the best kept secret of the House of Delegates and APTA Next Conference? And I feel like that is a really, a really um, good secret um, about the House of Delegates is that you can watch yeah. it and that you can join that community online. But um, do you have anything else to add to that, the best kept secret? Oh, we're getting to this one already. Okay, so I, I have some funny ones, and they might be inside jokes, but uh, maybe I should have taken this question more seriously. But we'll say APTA communities is the best kept secret. And then on top of that, the house. So one, use your colleague, colleagues in the gallery to bring you coffee, because you'll see people sprinting back and forth and giving the ushers at the House of Delegates cups of coffee, who are then delivered to the delegates who are desperately sucking down caffeine. Uh, so what? <laughs> Use your colleagues in the gallery for coffee runs. Two, never trust anyone in a seersucker suit. Okay. And if you're going to be at house this year, you'll see why. <laughs> um, and then number three, don't be surprised if there's a flash mob or like a random dance party in the middle of the house because it's been known to happen. Okay. We get a little fun. <laughs> you know, everybody keeps talking about how exciting the House of Delegates is, sprinting and laughing and all, you know, all of this stuff. And, and I, was, I was kind of wondering how that would happen. So I'm interested now after your best note secret. That's going to be good. <laughs> um, Sarah Barnes asks, how do students like myself who are unable to attend, um, hang on a second, I get, I got caught up. Uh, how do students like myself who are unable to attend stay in the loop on discussions? So um, that was the, that was um, the answer that that Keaton just at that goodness 
fumbling all over my words. Sarah, can you just ask that question? That's a great question. Um, let's go to Gabriella. Do you think that SPTAs or PTAs are involved enough in um, PT government and representation? Good question. So to be frank, I don't think so, no. Um, but that's just because nobody is fully involved enough in PT governance and uh, representation. So that includes PTAs, um, specifically SPTAs, which and PTs and PT, SPTs. So everyone in the PT profession is not involved enough. Now, I'm really hoping with some of the motions that passed last year and some of the evolution we've seen in the chapters with giving PT or SPTAs and PTAs uh, opportunity to vote at the chapter level that we'll start to see this change and we'll start to see the governance, um, interest in governance increase in the PTA community. But on a big spectrum, um, there's just not enough people involved in governance. And that's partly because there's a lack of an awareness or education around the importance of the issue. Um, so if you've ever been to one of these meetings like the House of Delegates or any of your state legislative meetings, then you, there's no way you can't feel the passion and the excitement around passing motions and pushing legislation and um, solution of PT. But then there's also a lot of people who kind of sit in the background and they benefit off of all the work that those people who are at the House and who are talking to legislators are doing. And they don't recognize necessarily that they are in a doctoring profession and they're able to see direct access patients um, and they're getting paid for different insurance companies because of the work that's going on at these conferences, these houses, at the House of Delegates. Um, so with that, a lot of people kind of take governance and legislation passively and they benefit off of it when it's the work of a small percentage of people actually doing it. So if, I think if people just realize that fact, if they realize where their profession is because of the things that the small percentage of people are doing, I think they would probably take a bigger interest and a big, bigger, bigger part of that role. So SPTAs, PTAs, PTs, everyone, I think really needs to get more involved and just more educated around it. Absolutely. Um, Allison Breaky asks, what's the biggest gap that you would like to see filled uh, between students and professionals as far as advocacy goes and getting your voice heard? Yeah, so this is a big question. <laughs> and I, saw, I saw this one already and so I spent a little bit of time thinking about it and I actually, I'm trying to think of how to say it without offending anyone, okay, because I've been so fortunate in my career to be surrounded by PTs who are just amazing. I mean, they're they're great clinicians, they're evidence-based, they participate in governance and advocacy, they do mentorship, they're ethical. I mean, the list goes on. I've been very fortunate. So in my world, 100% of the PTs, for the most part, I interact with are top of the game. Now, it's really been frustrating as my role in as a delegate and kind of getting more involved on the legislative side is that we're fighting for issues like repealing the Medicare cap or um, getting full direct access or getting higher reimbursement when we're fighting for this and we're so passionate about it. But we always come back to, you know, PTs over bill. There's we're using non evidence based practice. Their outcomes aren't effective enough. And it's because there's. 30% of the profession who are working their butts off to be perfect and evidence-based and, and great clinicians and good professionals. But you have a lot of people, kind of like I talked before, who are just kind of riding the wave and they're not working to be evidence-based and they're not working to be the best professionals they can. Mm -hmm. And when you have that majority and then you have a minority speaking for the majority, it's hard to prove our worth. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, there, there's a ton of awesome PTs. Everyone I know is a great PT. But what legislators are seeing is sometimes not the best representation of our profession. So the gap in that, so long story short, is that if for for not being your best PT, your best professional, you're the most involved you can be because we need the face of those people to be the people that legislators and patients recognize, not the people who kind of ride the wave. Oh, that's so, so good. So, um, so. Heather Smith, are you getting feedback? Not really. With an echo here, okay. I'm having technical oh, difficulties tonight. Sorry, everybody. I'm just yodeling in the background. I hope that's okay. Oh, you're good. <laughs> okay. Um, Heather Smith asks, um, I'd love to get more 
PTAs and SPTAs involved with APTA? What are recommendations? What are your recommendations? Yeah, so this is this has been uh, this has been a longstanding conversation, right? I mean, even there's been huge evolution even last year at the House of Delegates with having several motions come forth fighting for the rights or PTAs to vote. Um, or to serve as delegate. So there's been a lot of motion recently. And I honestly, I don't, I'm, I would love to hear from somebody on Twitter or another PTA has, has the ripple effect of, of passing PTA voting rights at the chapter level. Has that caused any buzz in the PTA world? Um, That's a really I know, good question. Yeah, and I wish I had heard more of it, heard more excitement. But I think with the hope of that is that with that motion passing, it kind of opens the door for PTAs to get more involved and, Absolutely. and hear their voice and kind of lights a fire under everyone's butt. Um, but I guess so the best way to, to get more people involved is just to actually reach out to PTAs for involvement. So at a chapter level, OPTA has been, Oregon Physical Therapy Association has been awesome at getting PTAs involved for the most part. I mean, we, we have a PTA who sat on our board for several, several years. We have a um, educated, well-spoken, professional PTAs who come to the House of Delegates, Delegates with us, but we do an active job of reaching out to them. So if in your chapter you're unhappy with the level of PTA engagement, I'd say call up a PTA, send them an email, and take them to lunch and just talk to them and see how can we get you involved, what are your interests, you know? They're no different than PTs and their excitement for getting involved. It's just a matter of maybe reaching out to them. Yeah, that's that's a really great um, point that you bring up, and it's just a, it's just like how you got involved. You got pulled in, um, invited to come to you know that pub night by yourself, and then you were hooked. So just bringing someone else along, even if it's just one person, I think um, making bringing just one person, and then that person brings another, and um, and then that ripple effect comes. That's such a good a good point. Um, James is asking on Twitter, uh, what steps did you go through to become a delegate for Oregon? Yeah, so each chapter is a little bit different in how they elect their delegates. Um, my involvement, I mean, if we're talking big scale here, where my involvement started way back my first year of PT school when I just kind of went out on a limb and applied for a scholarship to Federal Advocacy Forum through the North Carolina Physical Therapy Association, um, and I got this random email saying, hey, we'll pay for a student to go to federal advocacy, and I was like, well, I have no idea what that is. I don't know anything about legislation. I don't know what bills are. Who's in Congress? What is this? I'll go, <laughs> right? So it was, just kind of, it was kind of like, a, um, sure, don't expect me to know much, but I'll go, and that one decision changed my professional career, so I met this student assembly board of directors at that conference was convinced by Mecca, if you guys know Mecca, um, he's down in California, I think he's a delegate this year too. Um, he was on NomCom and convinced me to run for a position and so I did. And then doors just kept opening and I just kept saying yes to opportunities and next thing I know I was in Oregon as a pro new professional being asked to run for a delegate position. And my first instinct was, you guys are crazy. <laughs> because I've never, like, I've been to the House of Delegates, but I, I have not had an active role. You know, I was never actually a student delegate. Um, but, you know, I did some thinking, and I think, you know what? I'm just as capable as the next person, and I can learn quickly. So I said yes. Ran in Oregon for delegate in 2014, I want to say, um, for the 2015 year. And then I got elected. So that's how I'm here. That's awesome. So what is life like as a delegate? You know, it's terrible. It's awful. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Sarcasm. Um, life is busy as a delegate. It's, it is. It's busy, but it's very rewarding, obviously, or otherwise I wouldn't be here talking to you about it. Um, the thing about the way Oregon works as a delegation is we have once a month meetings every, like, I think it's every second. Wednesday or of the month or something and they're about two hour long meetings and then in between meetings we have we have to keep up with the tons and tons of email that come in regarding the motions and opinions on the motions and we have to read the motion packet so there this year I think there's 17 I want to say motions and so we have to read through them then we have to do the we have to read the background papers regarding the motions and 
So it's a lot of reading, it's a lot of preparation, and it's a lot of kind of background research to make sure that you understand the motions that you're voting on. Um, so it's just a little bit of preparation, but in that preparation, I mean, I'm constantly having this stream of what's going on in the profession and staying up to date. So it's definitely reward, rewarding, kind of busy. Yeah, that's amazing to be to just be able to know everything that's going on. I mean, very up to date. Um, so what are your suggestions? And this question is from Regina Siciliano. What are your suggestions or advice for students attending House of Delegates for the first time? How, how do we make the most of this incredible experience? That's a great question. Yeah. Well, first, my first advice to any new delegate, whether you're actually a delegate or if you're just going to check it out as a student, is don't expect to know everything. Um, I think as PTs, we're inherently a little bit type A and we want to know all the facts all the time. Um, first year, I went to House of Delegates two years as a Student Assembly Board of Directors member prior to going as an actual delegate. And even my first year as an actual delegate, I was scratching my head for a lot of it. Yeah, just because I didn't have the historical background to a lot of the motions that were coming about. Um, but with that, you just have to do your best to understand with the information that's presented to you. Ask people who do have a historical background on the motions. Do a little bit of your own research on the APTA website or via Google. Um, so just to go to it knowing there's going to be a lot of information and absorb as much as you can, but don't be stressed if you can't understand everything. Um, in preparation for the house, like I said, on the communities page, I'm pretty sure you can access the packets and the motion discussions. So if you just want to like kind of zoom through the motions and read a little bit of the background papers and the support statements, there tends to be pretty good summaries of what the motions intend to do. It's called the SS, the support statement. It's right underneath the motion in the packet. So just quickly read through those and get a little background on what you're going into. And bring coffee. And bring coffee. <laughs> I bring me coffee too. <laughs> That's so good. Um, so who can attend House of Delegates and how how should we attend it or how should we go? Yeah, so I'm learning a lot for this chat because I also had to look that up. Um, so, but it's a good question. So who can go to the House of Delegates? Let me make sure I have my... Okay, so... So anybody can go to the House of Delegates. If you're a member, you're allowed to go in and um, sit in the gallery. So all the delegates sit in the front of the house, and then there's a rope, and then behind it is a big gallery. And so anybody can go sit in there. Um, you have to get a pass if you're not a delegate, and I think if you're not a member, you have to get a certain pass that allows you in. And if there's a, into what? An APTA member, correct? An APTA member, yeah, an APTA member. Um, and then somebody tweet me if I'm wrong here, but when they have a private session of the house or an exclusive session, then it's only the delegates allowed to be in, and then people who are not on the delegation have to leave for a certain amount of time until we invite you back. But anybody can go and sit in the gallery. And even sometimes we have people participate from the gallery. So if it's approved, you can actually raise your hand and make a statement from the gallery, which happened twice last year. Um, but I don't think it's a, not very common. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So what is it? What is a gallery? What does that mean? Gallery is just a fancy term for people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. So if, if you're not a delegate, there's like 400 something delegates and they all sit up front and then the speaker of the house is in the front and there's a little rope and then everybody, there's chairs in the back. And so if you're not a delegate, you just go. Okay. Sit in the gallery. Makes <laughs> feel good. Gallery is a nice way to say that, right? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, why should we attend House of Delegates as students? Yeah, good question. So, I think I already touched on this a little bit when I ranted earlier about why you should be involved. But <laughs> as a student, we tend to get really into our facts and our classes and our tests and our anatomy and um, you, you kind of get honed in on what do you know right now and what do you need to graduate and what do you need to pass to pass your board exams um, and then maybe you're even thinking about what you know what is my next job going to be what's my practice setting going to look like how am I going to treat patients but you're not yet thinking about things like is my career sustainable am I getting reimbursed to a point that's um, 
going to give me an income that I can stay lively with, with my student debt? Um, where am I getting my patients from? Is Medicare allowing patients to come straight to me or do they have to get approval first? Or how much authorization do I have to do for patients coming through different insurance? I mean, there's a lot of factors that you don't even think about until you're in clinic. And then even so, if you're not in a private practice or you're not in ownership, if you're in a hospital, maybe you don't even think about those things at all. Um, so when you look behind the scenes, when you're at a place like House of Delegates or, or even, you know, state legislative conferences or whatever, um, you really get to kind of see, well, holy moly, there's a lot of work that goes into keeping our profession viable that a lot of people aren't participating in. Um, so rest assured, you know, that there's people in the APTA, there's delegates, there's ad advocacy experts within our profession who are looking for different threats to our profession and our, our liability, our viability. So that's why you should go. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that really is so, such a good, a good point. Um, and just, just being able to understand all realms of our profession, um, just because we have our interest in one area of PT, we're still PTs at the end of the day or PT students soon to be PTs. So, um, yeah, being able to understand all of what's going on is, is so important. And then being able to tell our colleagues and our classmates about it too. Um, so Paige Earhart asks what, um, how can a student who isn't actively involved in the student assembly, um, use House of Delegates or Next as a way to kickstart being more engaged. So I'm going to turn this one back to you here, Alexis. So one of the best things you can do, and I'm such a student assembly nerd, like I'm still, I, so I was a CI for the first time and I was still like, here's this little business card that tells you all the ways to get involved or check out this student assembly web page. Like, I'm just going to, I'm going to be the mom who's like, honey, you should go talk to the student assembly. <laughs> And so it's hard to, it really is hard to relate to professionals who are, have been in it for a long time and who seem to have such a broader depth of understanding. So it can be kind of intimidating to approach a delegate, which you should totally do. But sitting in the gallery is this group of really young, energetic, intelligent, eager people called the Student Assembly Board of Directors. <laughs> Um, and three of them are designated to actually come and recruit you. So they will love if you come talk to them um, and just ask them, you know, like, how did you get involved? Here are my interests. I'm not sure what I want to do. I don't want to commit to a big leadership position, but I do want some responsibility. Just talk to them and they will get you involved and they'll love it. Trust me. I love it still. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so yeah, so really to feel connected at the House of Delegates, you have to be there with somebody who's like your peer because it's kind of an intimidating environment. So seek out the students, bond together, share your experiences, and just get connected. Oh, I love that. Yes, everybody come and see us. Um, we've got our uh, delegates, our SPT and SPTA delegates, Cindy and Matt, and they're going to be in the they're not going to be in the gallery. They get to be in the, uh, what's it called? The floor? The floor, yeah. yeah. They get to be on the floor and representing our entire student assembly, which is incredible. So introduce yourself to them. Introduce yourself to us. And, yeah, that is definitely a great way to kickstart getting more engaged for sure. Uh, Luke Davidson asks, how has being <laughs> – and actively involved SPT changed your view of our profession and the direction we're heading. Wow, that's deep. Oh man. <laughs> that is How has me being involved changed my vision of the profession? Yes. Is that, yeah? Yes. Okay. I gotta give you some background history here. All right. So, let's do it. Okay. So, ever since probably day one of me getting into kinesiology, sports, athletic training, um, I was never the person who was like drawn to clinical work. So when I was an athletic trainer, we get assigned sports teams and I got assigned clinic manager. Mm. And I was like, what the heck is clinic manager? Like, give me football, give me something. Like, and they're like, you'll be great at clinic, clinic manager. You got to do clinic manager. And they were right. I loved it. Um, and so then I got to PT school and everyone was like neuro or peds or ortho or whatever. And I was like, hmm, I love the student assembly. I love my role as president. 
I love legislative issues. I don't really know where my role is clinically. So I've always kind of been on this track <clears throat> where looking at the big picture, looking at legislative, looking at governance issues, looking at organizational issues um, has always kind of been my view. So I've always kind of seen this like being involved in the profession is for me more so how can I affect greater change as opposed to how can I affect my next patient. Um, now don't get me wrong, I'm in, a, I'm in an awesome clinic setting. I've been in sports ortho for two years and I, I love it. Um, but I'm able to separate this, this vision of just clinic, how am I going to affect the next patient to, yes, I want to make the next patient better, but I also want to make all of the therapists around me great therapists and how can I affect that change as opposed to how can I just change my next patient. Ooh, that gave me chills. That was good. <laughs> that's, that's so important. And, you know, we all play a role in our profession and there's, there's a place for everybody. Um, and it sounds like you have found your place for sure. Well, I hope, I don't know how this is really going to manifest yet. I am right now I'm on a great clinical track. And so like this little voice in my head is always there, but how do I, put that into a career? How do I put that into action? So I do things like join the delegation to help me open doors. That's great. And yeah. Kenneth Felder asks, why should students attend a national conference? I love this question. I feel like it comes up several times and I always, I always love to hear people's answers. So. Yeah. Yeah. So similar to kind of what we've been talking about, but uh, more so than just House of Delegates. So like any national conference, um, it's expensive, right? So just don't go. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's terrible. Yeah. No, I'm totally kidding. So that is by far the most, like, because I don't have money to go. Right. Yeah, that's what everybody but says. When I was a student, I had more money than I realized because I was on student loans. And even though you don't want to overutilize your student loans, if you're going to use your student loans for everything, anything, go to NSC. You know, you have the money you can make the money work because looking back on my student career i never remember the paycheck i just remember the friendships and the connections and the doors that were opened and the motivation that i got i'll never remember a paycheck or, or whatever um but i would not be where i am now if i didn't apply to federal advocacy forum through ncpta um, and just go to a random conference that i knew nothing about and now I just, I'm connected at the Wazoo because of that one conference. So just go. Um, with that, which conference you go to is also, I think, pretty important. So they're all awesome. They're all great experiences. I tend to prefer the smaller conferences. So not so much CSM. Next is awesome. CSM is awesome. But they're big conferences. Um, little conf Littler conferences like NSC, National Student Conclave, um, Federal Advocacy Forum, House of Delegates. Those tend to, for me, be more productive because I'm with a smaller amount of people and you make more personal connections as opposed to just the crazy hustle bustle that is bigger conferences. But the opportunity is there in both. That's, that's a really good point. Um, just having that smaller population at the at those conferences, it gives you the opportunity to, you know, you keep you keep seeing the same faces walk by and uh, you can you can say hello and then it kind of turns into more and more. And then all of a sudden you're talking to this person for 30 minutes who ends up being someone who you could potentially work for. Yeah, that's great. So uh, Chris Rosari, um, she asked a, a lot of really good questions here. Um, and these are always great questions to ask a professional. So um, who are the professionals that you look up to? Oh, man. See, now I have to name names. So, <laughs> um, so I like. Go on. <laughs> Um, so like I said before, I have unbelievable mentors and in, they take all different shapes and sizes and not one of them were established via like a structured mentorship program. They all just kind of happened organically and from meeting people and getting involved and just reaching out to people for help. I came up with a list at one point of like the people that have been my mentors in the past or who I look up to or who I currently see as mentors and they're all kind of interchanged. Um, but when I was on the Student Assembly Board of Directors, we were super, super fortunate to have 
two um, of the ABTA Board of Directors be our direct advisors. And so that would be Kathy Mariella and Janine Gunn, who are always there, always interactive, always talking to us about our goals. And so I've always looked up to those ladies. Um, shout out to you guys. We'll see you at house. Um, and then more locally, so in the OPTA, I already said Derek Fenwick just reached out to me and took me under his little wing and forced me into, involve <laughs> into involvement, um, <laughs> which I appreciate. Um, but within OPTA, I mean, Tasha McElveen, who is the um, chief dele delegate for OPTA, Jane Montgomery, who is the old chief delegate work mentor, so my bosses, um, Josh Kidd, Jeff Cox, and Like I'm name dropping, but these guys are took me into their company knowing nothing about what I wanted to do and then just sort of shaped me into uh, what I hope is a really good therapist. Um, so and there's so many more I could just lift off, but in all aspects of my life, I've just been really fortunate to have people who are great role models. Um, oh, and Oprah. <laughs> like, <laughs> as stereotypical as that is, I mean, if, you, if you're feeling blue, just Google Oprah Google and Oprah. <laughs> it will lift you up. That girl... She is fierce, so. <laughs> I love it. Um, so what what books do you recommend us students to read? Um, all of your textbooks. Read them. Oh, thank you. <laughs> because I did it. <laughs> CI. <laughs> is that your CI answer? <laughs> In fact, all of my textbooks are being used to prop up my computer right now. So <laughs> per advice of Alexis Morgan here. Um, books to read. So if you're, uh, I'm only halfway through this book, but so far it's been an awesome book. And if you're female or male, but it's more specifically female, it's called Lean In. Um, like Lean In like this, like Lean In like that. Um, <laughs> and I'm totally blanking on her name right now, but she basically goes into how can you develop a professional life, a successful career, and manage being a woman, so having children and, you know, getting married and all of these things. Um, and she has a very, like, not frou-frou, very open, very motivating way of, of putting it. And so looking down my career, that's something I've thought about a lot, and she really helped me, like, lean in essentially that's awesome um, i actually just put that on my wish list um good yeah it's good. Like cheryl sandberg yeah oh cheryl sandberg that's what it is yeah uh, and then another one that i read which i think i would suggest read the first half of it and then it gets kind of repetitive but another one is called to sell as human oh that's a good one um have, have you heard that one yeah that one yeah cool. Yeah, I really enjoy the first half because we don't think of ourselves as PTs, as salespeople, but we are. Like, what are we doing? Somebody's coming to our clinic and we have to sell to them that our services are valuable and we have to get them to come back and give us money and sometimes quite a bit of money to keep coming back to see us. So it's not a privilege to have a patient or it's not a right to have a patient there. It's a privilege. And so you really have to sell yourself to get that patient to keep coming back. So, and that's not something we really get well in PT school. I don't think it's just the ability to sell yourself. So to sell as human is the other one. So um, lean in and to sell as human. Those are, yeah. that's, that's a really good recommendations. Yeah. And I could keep going, but you know, maybe I'll just publish it like a reading list. I'll start like an Oprah yeah. Keaton reading list. On Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> that's great well thanks everybody for joining us um, I don't think we have any more questions on Twitter so I just have a few announcements um, and then we will call it a night so first off thank you Keaton for being here um, this is a great exchange chat and um, also want to say thank you to the Student Assembly Board of Directors for helping out on Twitter and for Brian who helps me read all of the tweets and ask the questions because it can kind of get crazy on Twitter as you as you guys all know so shout out thank you um, and the pulse is out this month so if you haven't seen it already go and check it out it's all over our social media and it's on our website so that is if you don't already know the student newsletter that comes out once a month and um, there's some awesome information in there so um, We've got House of Delegates, which is coming up June 6th through the 8th, and then next is the second half of the week, June 8th through 11th. We've got some student events that you definitely don't want to miss. Um, it's going to be great. 
And lastly, go ahead and mark your calendars because we are talking with Ben Fung next month on the June Exchange chat. And that is June 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern. And in the future, we've got John Childs. We're talking about mentorship. And uh, that's July and August is with Seth Wyrock. And we're talking about clinicals and internships. So we've got some awesome exchange chats coming up. And I'm so excited that all you guys were here. And mark your calendars because we've got more to come. So uh, Keaton, do you have anything else to say? I got two things. One, mark your calendars. October 15th this year is the second annual PT Day of Service. Um, you will be getting tons of blasts, social media. Our website will be up and running soon. Well, it's up and running, but the signups will be up and running, um, hopefully right after House of Delegates. So start thinking about what you want to do for your service projects and keep your ears open for more info there. And then secondly, if anyone listening, if you guys want to reach out to me, I'm happy to talk to you guys. Um, preferably, I'll try my best over Twitter, but I, I really struggle. I really do. Uh, so if you want to shoot me a Twitter message or tweet to me, and then I'll follow up with you on email. That's how we'll, <laughs> that's how we'll talk. But I'll do my best to respond to you guys. But please reach out to me if you have any questions or you just want some mentorship or something. I'm happy, happy to help. That's great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll catch you next time on the hashtag ExchangeSAChats. Thanks, Alexis.